Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. I'm really happy to have you here. And I have a great topic today that has nothing to do with emotional eating directly, but everything to do with emotional eaters because as emotional eaters we tend to get stressed out over things like throwing parties and I had a party and I'm going to tell you about it because I have some hacks for making it stress-free um, but I also just want to share that you know our fear of how we look how our house looks what to serve you know comparing ourselves to others who have thrown parties all that gobbledygook that goes on between our ears that stops us from having parties stops us from socializing stops us from reaching out to friends and connecting all that stuff uh, doesn't serve us one bit because it's so easy to have a party if you have the right attitude so i'm going to share with you uh, some things that i discovered in hopes that it can help you because let's face it emotional eaters need to be connected we've got to get out into the world we've got to you know let down our guard allow, our, allow ourselves to connect with others uh, you know overcome that fear of what people are going to think of us and just get out there and live because that you know fear of living and fear of people is what keeps us trapped in the bondage to food in the bondage to isolation and and really to just fat and misery so i held an oscar party for my girlfriends and i do this every year at oscar uh time because i love the oscars i love movies i watch a lot of movies and i often have seen most of the ones nominate nominated um and so it's just really fun and and i'd much rather see the oscars with a bunch of girlfriends than on my own or with my husband so Girls are just more fun to watch the Oscars with, let's face it. <laughs> so I invited uh, several girlfriends over. I think I had 14 women come over to my house. And two hours before they came to my house, I was at somebody else's party, a birthday party for a girlfriend. And it seemed a little crazy, right, to go to a party while I'm having, you know, the same day as I'm having a party. But because I decided not to stress about this and not to try to make it perfect, it worked out beautifully and I got to go to my friend's party and celebrate her and then host my own. So I'm just going to tell you about what I did and, and how easy it was uh, in hopes that I can encourage you to do the same because we've got to get out there in the world. And here's the deal. It's not about the host. Okay, so this party wasn't about me. It was about gathering women together who could enjoy each other's company and have fun. And so much of the time we think it's about us and how our house looks and, and this food that we serve and the right combinations of people and, and yada, yada, yada. But the point is, if you have good people, which hopefully you, you, you'd only invite good people, uh, when you invite uh, good hearted people to your house, it's so much more about them making connections with each other and having a good time. And when you focus on just the love, it's all about the love. If you focus on the love, everything else falls into place. So I didn't want to stress about this because I don't have time to stress about a party. I've got too much going on. Um, and yet I wanted to have a party. And so what I did is, first of all, I was going to have it. Um, I was going to buy food from a, a local restaurant, one of my favorite restaurants. Uh, if you live in L.A., it's Panini Cafe. They've got the most amazing Mediterranean um, uh, grilled chicken and, and salads. But uh, I ended up not doing that because I didn't have somebody who could pick up the food and they don't. Uh, Uber Eats doesn't work with this restaurant restaurant. So I thought, okay, and literally thought this the morning of, <laughs> okay, so the morning of, I thought, okay, I'm going to buy, I'm going to bag that plan and I'm going to make my own meal. So I went to um, Trader Joe's and I went to Whole Foods and I got everything I needed and I spent about a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks to host it, what total, total 15 women. Okay. Including myself. And this is how it went. I bought uh, hors d'oeuvres at Tr Trader Joe's. I bought cheese and I bought nuts. And I bought, um, uh, what else, some crackers and uh, some vegetables to cut up and some hummus. 
And that was my whole hors d'oeuvre section. And all I had to do is put it on two plates. I put the hummus and cut up vegetables. I got the little baby carrots that were already all set. I didn't have to do anything to those, but I got some Persian cucumbers and I cut those up into little discs that could be used to dip into hummus and some red and yellow peppers. And that was it. Just cut that up, put that on a plate around uh, the, the container of hummus. And then I put on a, a larger plate, I put different kinds of cheeses, um, some nuts, some grapes, some crackers. Um, and then I also want to make this super healthy. So I went to Whole Foods and I bought a certain kind of cracker that was gluten free and uh, was just made out of um, quinoa and flax or something like that. So I got some of those crackers and I got a cheese that was cashew cheese, no dairy whatsoever. It was delicious. And um, and then I just um, put all that on a plate, you know, sort of sorted it, it, sort of spread some nuts in between the grapes and the cheeses and the crackers. And, and that was it. That's my hors d'oeuvres. Then what I decided to do, and this is my my best party hack. I like to serve foods, especially if we're sitting on the couch watching TV, right? We're not at a table. Um, so we're on the couch, so it can be a little dicey, right? You know, we don't want any um, pieces of salad flying off the uh, plate or chicken uh, flying. And so it needed to be food that people could eat with a fork and that was it, no knives. And it makes it so much easier and there's much less mess when you when you serve for a fork only. I didn't want people cutting because that's get messy and hard and elbows are knocking each other off when you're when you're sitting on a couch. I didn't have a lot of room for this, guys. I had, uh, you know, my my home and the TV, I don't have like a big TV room, OK, or a big, um, you know, den or something. I mean, it's I live in a condo. It wasn't a lot of space, but uh, we somehow made it work. And that that would be an impediment right there for someone thinking, oh, I don't have the space to have this many people over to watch one television. But you know what? The closer we are forced to get, the more fun we have. So I must have had about seven women on the couch um, or maybe six, but, and then we were, uh, had a few chairs and, and bar stools. And it was cozy and it was fun. And my food didn't go flying because here's what I prepared. I prepared something that was, um, again, no knives required. And so I made salmon salad. I used this yummy salmon, canned salmon from Vita, uh, Vital Choice, which is um, a, a company that cans their salmon up from the Pacific Northwest in Alaska, uh, right out at sea, they can it. So it's super healthy and fresh and, um, and, and not farm raised. And, uh, so I use that canned salmon and I mixed it with veginase from follow your heart, which is a dairy free mayonnaise, which is super yum. And mix that up, put it in the fridge, had it sitting there uh, chilled uh, while my guest arrived. And I bought a big tub of uh, spring mix from uh, Whole Foods, $4.99 for a, a pound of uh, organic greens. I put those in a big bowl. I made a dressing out of uh, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, salt and pepper, some spices like um I don't even know what I put in that. I may not have put anything in that salad dressing and some mustard, um, some Dijon mustard, uh, the healthy, well, some from Whole Foods that doesn't have alcohol in it because I, I like to have Dijon without alcohol. And I mixed that up just with a fork in a, in a cup. And uh, when it came time to serve, I just put the dressing on the salad. I, I cut up some cherry tomatoes to put in the salad and some um, chopped walnuts. And that was it for the salad. And then the last thing I served besides the salmon salad and the greens um, was a pasta dish, uh, which was made, the pasta I found at Whole Foods was made out of chickpea flour. So if you don't eat grain and you don't eat uh, gluten, which is grain, obviously, um, you there's more alternatives yet on the shelf at Whole Foods. And I found a pasta made out of chickpeas and pea protein. So I made that pasta, um, cooked it up a little earlier before I went to my other party and mixed in some balsamic vinegar and olive oil and um, I bought some roasted peppers and I put those in there with some salt and pepper and that was it that's my entire meal okay so um, that's that's everything um, I had bought some cookies from Trader Joe's I also had some healthy cookies that were sugar-free and dairy-free and wheat gluten-free um, 
but the Trader Joe's cookies, <laughs> they won out. Um, so uh, people like those better. But bottom line is this, this is easy food to serve. It didn't take much time. I didn't have to turn on my oven. Um, I did turn on the stove to cook the pasta, but it was easy. It was delicious. It had healthy things that people could enjoy uh, without having to, you know, eat something that wasn't good for them. Um, and then I bought a, a, a 12 pack of uh, LaCroix uh, soda, uh, sparkling water, flavored sparkling water. And most people had that. I had some wine available, some red and white that a few people um, enjoyed. I'm not a drinker myself. And so I asked somebody else to open the bottle because I literally don't even do that well because I'm, I have no practice. Um, but most people had water and I had I let them get it for themselves in the fridge so it stayed cold. I mean, this is low stress. This is low stress, um, nothing perfect about it. Um, I was casual and I just said, yeah, what do you wanna drink? Yeah, the water's in the fridge or the wine's right there on the counter. Um, I didn't use wine glasses because I don't want anyone spilling red wine on my couch. So I just used low glasses that are just used for water typically and, and nobody had any problem with that. Um, I used plates and real silverware um, just for the hell of it. And, and because my kitchen is in the same room as where we're watching TV, I got to do the dishes while we were watching. And so by the time the party was over, I didn't have any work to do because I was able to be with my friends and, and clean, the, clean up the kitchen at the same time. So I hope you're getting the idea here that this is very low stress and it was fun. And I, you know, it wasn't about me. It was about the women getting together and having fun and having a fun thing to do, which is watching the Oscars and the dresses and the glam and the the humor. Jimmy Kimmel so darn funny. And, you know, it just was so great and, and positive and uplifting. Many great messages um, at the Oscars um, just about empowerment. And so it was a great evening. But my bottom line message today is it can be low stress. You can have fun. You can gather people together. And so long as you're holding the space for women, especially to get together, they are going to appreciate it and, and, and get benefit from it. So the details of what you're serving and how you look and how your house looks so don't matter. You know, especially in busy cities, it might not it might not be as hard in uh, when you're in a more of a suburbia area. But in the cities, we just don't get together much and we don't see each other much. And having an occasion to get together and just blow off some steam and have fun is just so great. And uh, when you provide that for your friends, I do this also. I do a lot of uh, girls nights out, which is um, at, you know, at the dinner and a movie. And so a lot of times it's not at my house, but you know, having something at your house uh, doesn't have to be so hard and scary or messy or uh, expensive. Literally, I spent about a hundred bucks on this party. So it was fun. Uh, they all appreciated it. I had a good time and, uh, and I didn't have to hurt myself. I didn't have to overeat by the grace of God. Um, you know, I kept to my plan and, and what I needed to eat. And then frankly, I made food that I felt comfortable eating. I wouldn't have it any other way except for the Trader Joe's cookies. <laughs> you know, those those aren't really something that I want to get into. So anyway, I share this with you uh, so that you can feel empowered to do something fun and stop making a big deal about it, okay? Stop having obstacles to having fun uh, because of what your head's saying about how perfect it needs to be. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be fun, and it just needs to be. That's the most important thing. Pick something fun to do that you like to do and gather other people around to do it with you. I would have watched the Oscars regardless, but having uh, 14 women in my house to watch it with me is so much better. So pick something fun that you like to do. Do it at your house or plan it. Everybody appreciates the planning uh, when it happens for them so they don't have to do it. Um, but it doesn't have to be a burden for you. I use Paperless Post, which is um, a service online that creates these really beautiful invitations that goes to each person and they can get reminders through Paperless Post. So I don't have to mail a darn thing. Um, you know, the digital age makes it so much easier to get the word out and to gather people together. So I hope that helps. And I hope uh, you have a, a party soon, uh, whether it's at your house or you gather some people together at a restaurant. All you got to do is send the invitation out and make 
make a reservation. That's it. Uh, movie night is super fun. Dinner and a movie. And so, uh, you know, doing that, super fun. But just taking the initiative to do this is going to make you feel great and uh, people will appreciate it. And this way you'll start connecting. You'll break out of your isolation, which is so easy to get to into when we're emotional eaters, right? We, we just isolate and we're not... Um, you know, we're not connected and that leads to overeating because the more isolated we are, the darker we feel, the more negative we feel, the more all we have to listen to is our own negative heads and what we think of ourselves. Uh, but when you interact with other people, you realize that, you know, there's so much you can bring to the world and, and you're doing it as you're hosting people for a party. So I hope you try it. Please email me if you do. Tell me something you're planning. I want to hear about it. It would make me so, so happy because I want to see you have fun and lighten up. So thanks so much for watching or listening. And please share this uh, with your friends. Let them know that there's a safe place for them to come when they're sick and tired of diets and exercise plans and want to just really get down to brass tacks about what it takes to overcome emotional eating. It has very little to do with food. It has everything to do with what's between our ears and that's what we share with here and some tips and tricks as well around food and getting healthy um, but it's time to just deal with the real stuff and that's what we do here so thanks for joining me i love you and i'll see you on the next show if you enjoyed this show and want to get free support insider health info exclusive invites to events and more visit healyourhunger.com